All right, this one said below is a table of values for exponential functions in the form of f of x equals a times b to the x plus k. So this is the systems of equation one. Write the equation that represents the table. First thing we have to find here is what? First is the first common difference, right? So 13 minus 8, 23 minus 13, 43 minus 23, 83 minus 43. So I'd get 5, 10, 20, 40. And then you want to find the ratio of those. So 10 to 5 or 20 to 10 or 40 to 20. All of them should result in the same thing. So you really only need to do one, which is 2. So B is 2. Then I have to plug in two points. So I'm going to pick the first two, but you literally could pick any of them and you plug them in. So the Y is 8. The A is what we don't know. The B is 2. The X is 0 plus K. And I get 8 equals, this would just be 1, A plus K. Then your second equation would be the second one, 13 equals A times 2 to the first plus K or 13 equals 2a plus k. And then you can choose between elimination and substitution. How many of you pick substitution, just out of curiosity? How many of you pick elimination? Okay, it's almost an even split. So if I did substitution and you did k equals 13 minus 2a, this goes here. 8 equals a plus 13 minus 2a, negative 5 equals negative a, and a equals 5. And then I want to take and plug it back in, and you can plug it back into any of them. So if I plug it back in here, I get 8 equals 5 plus k, and k equals 3. And then my final answer is plugging back in the a and the k and the b. So f of x or y, I'll take either one there, equals a, which is 5, times b, which is 2 to the x, plus k, which is 3. How do we do? Good. Raise your hand if you got it right. Okay, good. I feel like those are the like weirdest ones from yesterday's stuff. So if we're good on that, we should be good on the rest of it. Yes? Here. So this is all calculator-based. You're going to enter in that stuff. Be careful with your years, right? It says that 2012 is two, year 2. So that would be 2, which would make 15, 5, which would make 18, 8, which would make 21, 11. And then if you type in that information, you graph it, and then you do the stat plot, you get y equals 0.626 times 1.101 to the x. Make sure you're putting the parentheses around the 1.101. Make sure that's the only thing being raised to the x power. Then for b, it says use the model to predict it. So I did the y1. I stored it. So I did y1 of 23 would have been 13. And you get 2.189 million people. And then c, during what year did the population re reach 1.5 million? So I added a y equals of 1.5, graphed it, and saw where they crossed. Look like this. And then did intersection to see where it intersected. And the X value there was 9.02, so on and so forth. But which means that it happened during the ninth year, which means you have to give it the value of 2019. So it wouldn't be nine. Okay, be careful with that stuff. Questions? All right, two six is called competing function model validation. It is basically going to teach you how to find from, a, from data the most appropriate model in a couple different ways. One, with a graph. Two, with points. Three, with graphing something called your residuals, which we're gonna talk about in today's lesson. Part of this would be I can look at a graph and I can say it with, you know, like identifying the shape of it, which you wouldn't have a calculator for, and part of it you will have a calculator for. So we are now looping in linear, exponential, and quadratic as options. For any of this, if you're given points, you need at least three points to determine it because you can't use two. That would give you a common, it would give you maybe one difference, but it's not going to give you enough to know the common ratio or anything like that because it's not two pairs. So you need at least three points to determine. And then we're going to loop in again. We're going to go back to linear. We're going to pull in quadratic and now add to it exponential. So if it's linear function, 
then the rate of change is constant. So the y2 minus the y1, the y3 minus y2 would all be the same value. And that constant's your slope. If it's exponential, it's proportional. So this is not exponential with a k value. This is just a times b to the x. So the second one over the first one, third one over the second one, fourth one over the third one would all result in the same ratio. And then quadratic would be the second difference. So you'd have to find the first difference. It wouldn't be the same. You'd find the second difference. And if that's the same, now it's quadratic. Those three you can do without a calculator. The only one of these three that can repeat y values is your quadratic. Because if you think about it, ex whoa. exponential would increase. You're never going to have the same y twice. Linear is either going to increase or it's going to decrease, but you're never going to have the same y twice. Quadratic is the only time where you could see a y repeated. So if you have a set of values and your y is repeated with a different x, it's not like the same point, then you can assume that's quadratic. If it says it has to be one of the three, another option might be that it is none of those. So be careful with that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is literally from our T-chart. What type of model is represented by the data? So if I look at it, I want to see, is it increasing by the same amount? Is it being multiplied by the same number? That kind of stuff. So if I look at A, first thing is look at your X values. Make sure they're going up in equal increments. And they are. They're not going up by ones, but they are going up by equal increments. So 2.75, let's find, wait, say we find the first difference. 2.75 minus a negative, which would be plus 0.75, gives you what? 3.5, yes? Okay, 6.25 minus 2.75 gives you? 3.5. 9.75 minus 6.25 gives you? 3.5. So which model is this? Linear. The other ones. Well, if it didn't work, I'd go to the second difference since you already did the first difference. And then I'd go to proportional. Look at B. Are my X values going up in equal increments or, or down? They could go up or down, but in equal increments. The X is R, yep. Now look at your Y's. Am I adding the same thing every time? 4 minus 1, 9 minus 4, 16 minus 9. No. Am I multiplying by the same thing each time? So then what do we think the other option is? Quadratic. To do that, we need the second difference. So I do 4 minus 1, which is 3, 9 minus 4, which is 5, 16 minus 9, which is 7, and then 5 minus 3, which is 2, 7 minus 5, which is 2. So this is quadratic. Yep. And then if you did this step and, like, it didn't, like, basically work, it would be neither? It would be none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, if, if and you did the ratio one, like, 4 over 1 and 9 over 4, yes. All right, C, what type of model is represented by the data? This time, am I increasing by the same amount? 3 minus 0.75, 12 minus 3, 48 minus 12, no. Am I multiplying by the same thing? I would say if there's decimals, like, move to the ones that have whole numbers. How do I get from 3 to 12 and 12 to 48? Four. Multiplying by 4. So, is 0.75 times 4, 3? <laughs> if you have a 75 cents and then another 75 cents and then another 75 cents and another 75 cents, is it $3? Yeah. 75 plus 75 is 1.5, right? So, yes, this would also be times 4. So, what is this? Exponential. Exponential. Questions on that one? All right, now we're going to learn about something called a residual and a residual plot. So the residual, or R is the variable we use for it, is the distance from the actual point to the point on the residual model, which means it is the actual point versus the predicted amount. If I look at this first graph, okay, this is a graph that has like the cost of meals versus the number of guesses, of guests. The dots is the actual data. So when there was one... It was like, let's say that's 9, okay? Or there was another time where it was 1 and it was 15. And then it was 2 and it looks like it could be like 21, something like that. That is from your actual data, okay? So the stat plots is actual data. 
Then in this scenario, they ran a regression model and found that linear was the best and then graphed that linear regression, which is the green line. That would be the predicted value. So residual or dots are actual, I'm not residual, sorry. Initial or the dots are your actual values. The line or the curve or whatever, that is your um, regression curve, would be the predicted value. And then you're gonna ask to be comparing the difference. So the distance between these is R. This value is R. This value is R. That one's kind of on top of it. You barely be able to see it, but it's not really, it's, it would be small, but it would be there. This is R. This is R. This is R. So there were times where it was actually spot on. This one looks like it's actually spot on. The predicted equaled the actual. But for the most part, it was a little bit off, which is totally fine. That's, this is a predicted model. It's not perfect. Okay. It might ask you to find the value of R. So you would take the initial, whatever the actual is and subtract it from the actual value if you plugged in that same value. So if I asked you to give me the difference here, then I would find my linear function using the calculator. I would find f of, this is 5, and I would compare it to this dot, which appears to be like, I don't know, 67. You would know those things, okay? And then I would say the difference is whatever, I, did I, I cut it off, yeah. Okay, I was going to say there was an actual linear, mo linear model on here. Let's say that this gave me, what, 60, because it looks like it's about that. And it would say, what's the difference? So R itself is a positive 7, right? Because it would be 67 minus 60. R is 7. And because it's a positive 7, that means the model underestimated where it should be, right? The model falls underneath my actual point. So model, in this case, underestimated because it's the distance between the actual point which we said was here and we said that's probably 67 and the predicted point which is here this no 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 r's changing oh. that r is seven okay good question r is not the same along your model does that make sense Okay, R is not always the same. It will be specific. So if I said, let's, we, let's say we go to this one here, and let's say R is only like one because it's pretty close. That one, the actual is below the model. So in that scenario, at two, the model overestimated what it would be. Does that make sense? So if the line curve, because it's going to be different things. It could be linear, it could be exponential, it could be quadratic. If the line or curve is above the actual, then it's an overestimate. If it's under the actual, it's an underestimate. Would it ask us like at x equals 2 to the model? Yep. Okay. Yep. It'll say like, what is r and what does it mean in this model? So if r is negative, right, it's below it, then it means it was an overestimate. If R is positive, it would mean it's above it, then it's an underestimate. But like, how would you like know, like how would you know what it's asking? Like if some of the points are under and some of the points are above. It will be specific about which one. Oh, okay. Or it will say an overall, and then you would literally count how many points are over and how many points are under. Okay. And how would you calculate the R for that? Though? You wouldn't. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Everybody heard that? So if it was an overall trend, I would see how many points were over and how many points were under. And if more were over, then it's an underestimate. If there are more points under, and now it's an overestimate. But usually it will be specific and say what happens at this predicted value. Okay, so now a residual plot, notice that we're changing the kind of graph. A residual plot, which is happening on the right, has your x values and then your r values. So it took all the distances in between the actual model and the predicted model, and it plotted, plotted, plotted it on your x, y axis. So if I went to, let's go back to five, since we know that one. At five, my actual was at 67-ish, we said, and my predicted was at 60, so the r there was seven. If I go to five, look where my r is plotted, it's at seven. So if I look at a residual plot, anything above here is gonna be an underestimate, and anything below here is an, was overestimated. 
because now your model is at zero. Valeska. When you're saying that the residuals plot your R's, like the dots. Say that again. Like the dots yeah, the y, yeah, so the Y value on a residual plot is the R. So if I compare these two, let me clean this off. If I compare these two, if you go to one, you actually had two values. One in which the R was above the line, and it looks like the distance there might be five or two, actually, no, because it's 10. Let's say this is 11 and this is 15. Maybe it's four-ish. If I go to this graph, look, it's a little bit under four. We estimated. Oh, no, that's this one because it's an underestimate. That's this one. That's this one. Because this, right, my actual is bigger than my model. Then on this one, one it, that's a little bit below it, right, and that's this guy. If I go to two, two is here. That point is below my model. If I come over here, it's below my model. If I go here, four, four is here. This is above my model, so my R is up here. If I go to five, it's above my model, so it's here. If I go to six, there's two. One on the model, look, that's right there. And one below the model, which is here. So your zero is the model? Correct. Okay. Yep. And then the last one is 10. 10 is above the model. If I go to 10, it's above the model. Yep. I don't think it will be asked that way. I don't think so. Maybe it's, you would say you couldn't determine. Like yeah, or neutral or something like that. Yeah, I haven't seen anything like that, though. Would the, like, would the amount of how much overestimated versus underestimated? I don't know that you'd have to get that specific. Okay. Yeah. Edward. Yeah, so if you were just given the left graph and you were kind of asked to decide whether it was like underestimated or overestimated, yeah. So if the point is above it, then the model underestimated. Point above, model underestimated it. Because it predicted it to be lower. And if the point is below, now the actual was higher than, or the predicted was higher than the actual. So this would be an overestimate. Is that what you're asking? No, I'm asking. Oh. Oh, uh, it wouldn't give you one. There's two. Yeah, it wouldn't give you one where there's two. Valeska. Um, does that apply for the residual plot too? Yeah. <laughs> the point above means under. Correct. Because okay. the model was here, and this is what actually happened. What actually happened was more than the model, so the model underestimated it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So if the model is below, if you want to think about it that way, if the model is under, it's an underestimate. If the model is above, it was an overestimate. All right, then the, the, what else is on here? It says if the residual plot has a pattern, then the model is not appropriate, and that's important. If your residual plot, so we're talking now this guy, if that had some sort of a pattern, if it looked like a line, if it looked like a curve, if it followed like symmetric dots, some sort of a pattern, then that was not the best choice. That linear model was not appropriate. If it doesn't have a pattern, if you look, this is like sporadic. There's some here, 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 here. There's no pattern to that. I would say this model is appropriate, okay? Pattern, not appropriate, no pattern, appropriate. Those questions would look something like this. On the left, there is no pattern. It's sporadic, some are above, some are below. There's no pattern to it, there's no symmetry to it. This is appropriate. And on the right, it has this kind of curvy shape. That's a pattern, this is not appropriate. Which means there is a better regression to pick there. Not appropriate. All right, so look at this, look at A and look at B. What do we think, does A have some kind of a pattern? No, so this is appropriate. God bless you. Does B have a pattern? Yes, so this is not appropriate. Correct.
Good so far. And again, that's without a calculator question. All right, this one says the graph shows a bivariate data set and at least squares regression line. It basically is a regression line, okay? This itself is the line of best fit. And then all these points are the actual data. That's what that means. God bless you. So underneath it, it says which graph shows the residual plot for the same data set. So if I just looked at one, where should my dot be? Above the line or under the line? Above. above the line. Look at that already. The only one above the line is C. Let's say that there was two of them above the line. I would go to two. And where would I expect to see the dot? Below the line. And then I'd go to three. Where should it be? Above the line. And if you see this pattern continues in that way, that's why C would be the map, the residual plot. Yeah. But the dot is above it. Right. So like the, the line is this is the predicted value, right? So for one, the pre predicted value was less than the actual value, which means the, the model underestimated what it actually was. This is still R. Is an o so the line is here. The line is still under what it was supposed to be. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. So, so is one, is one, is the, did the line underestimate one? The line underestimated one. Okay. Yes. The line literally lies under it. So the line underestimated it. But the points have to match above or below the predicted. Correct. Like it, and there's, I mean, obviously this one's kind of obvious because the first one is literally the only one that's above. But you could have had one match up perfectly fine. Or you could have had it above, but not far enough above. Like the R would be specific. <clears throat> All right. Now we're going to talk about something called the coefficient of determination. And this is where you need your calculators. So R squared is called the coefficient of determination. I'm going to teach you how to find it on the calculator. And then this is going to tell you which one is the best model. The closest to one R is, or R squared is, means it's the most appropriate model. So if R squared ends up being one, it is a perfect model. If it's 0 0.9999, it's going to be really good. Okay, if it was 0.5, that is not an appropriate model. We're awake and listening, yes, because I have to show you how to do this. So it's in that little screenshot, but the first thing you have to do is go to your mode on your calculator. Yep. So it has to be closer than one, but cannot be below than one? Um, it will always be positive because it's squared. But like 0.5 that you said. So 0.5 would not be a good model. But if it's like the closest of them, if they gave you three and 0 0.5 was the highest, then that's the best one, but it's not a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to mode on a calculator. And fourth from the bottom says stat diagnostics. It's in blue on mine. It's fourth from the bottom, not stat wizard, but stat diagnostics. That has to be turned on. So all the way down, fourth from the bottom, you want it to be on. When you reset your calculator for your quiz or your test, it goes back to off just like the stat plot goes back to off. So you're going to have to turn those on. Okay? Yeah. Are we losing it doesn't matter because we're not doing trig yet. It doesn't matter. Yeah. This is just for this. Yeah. You don't get models for the other classes. <laughs> Ever. Um, I feel like, I actually don't know what stat wizard does, but I'm assuming it helps with the stat plot, like to know the best fit around it. I can't be in the room with you. Maybe I'll send you a little, a little message in the morning. He said before the AP exam, is somebody going to remind us to do this? I obviously can't be in the room with you. So I'll send you a little message in the morning. Do we have to like turn it off for like other going to have you reset your calculator in the morning of the AP exam. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. They don't know to have you do that. It was like other calculations. Did somebody tell you to do it in the PSAT? No, they don't know to do that. What do you mean? No, no, this is specific to the residual. That's it. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my stat. 
I'm going to plug in whatever information I want. So I think I have, yeah, let's go with the one that we had from before. We just have our stat plot information, okay? I'm going to go to graph. So you can see this is what we, this is the first example from today. And what did we think was the best fit? Sure, exponential maybe, yeah. It could also have been quadratic. quadratic. What happens if it comes back on the left-hand side, if it comes back up, right? We don't know for sure, yes? Does that make sense? Right, what happens if on the left-hand side where we don't have dots, it came back up, right? You don't know for sure, but does look like exponential is probably good. When I go to stat and I go to calc, I'm gonna go down to exponential, which is zero. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm just gonna hit enter here all the way down to the bottom. And now look what got added here. It says R squared and R squared is 0.9758, which is pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I'm looking at R squared, not R, R squared. So now if I wanted to compare it, I'm gonna go back, stat, calc. I go down, let's say what happens if it was quadratic? 0.996. So a better model would have been quadratic. Does that make sense? Yes. So it will literally give you, which you'll see in a second, it's going to give you the data. It's going to say, sometimes it will say find, specifically find all three, then compare them. Sometimes it will just say which is the best. And now you have to compare all three. Because just because what you're given looks like it could be exponential doesn't mean that's the best fit overall. Valeska. Uh, it'll say linear, quadratic, exponential. Yeah, you'll see it. It says it on the. It says it on the on the example. Before we get there, though, if you look at the bottom, it says an R squared of 0 0.9497 means that 94.97 percent of the variation in the dependent variable is explained by the variation in the independent variable. So that's the wording on it. It is a percentage because it will say, what does that mean in this context? And that's what it is. So in the case that we just did, 99.6%, which is pretty good, 99.6% of whatever this model was, I don't even remember what it was, of the, in, of the dependent variable, so the output, is explained by the independent variable, which was the input. Did we have, it was millions, right? It was population of millions? So specific to the, con the, the actual question that we had, 99% or 99.6% of the population was explained by, no, other way around, 99.6% of the dependent variable, oh yeah, which is the population, was explained by the year, okay? That, those are your independent, independent ones. And again, the closer that is to 100%, the better your model is. All right, so this one says, the cost of college tuition in the United States has increased 1,200%, which is lovely, since 1980. Consider the average annual tuition and fees presented in the table. So this is for public universities. Find the model that best fits the data. Compare the predicted cost of the public university in year 2010 to the actual cost, and what does it mean in this context? So first of all, i got to figure out how to plug this sucker in. It didn't tell me 1980 was blank year. So how can we use it? Since. I can make it what? Zero. Zero. I could have made it one, but then I got to go up by 10. So it'd be like one and 11 and 21, which is fine. You set that mm -hmm. unless it says. So if I make this year zero, what's 1990? 10, 2000, 20, 2010, 30, and 2020, 40. And then I'm going to enter all that in. Why should we put in the Because you're going to have to be like Shh, all the way over on your X. You don't need to do that. Would it work though? Um, technically, you, your A would be messed up. No, because that's not your initial value. So your exponential, your B might be right, but your A will be wrong. 27. Well, what do we do like that difference? Your A would still be the first one. No, I mean, like, what if we set 90? So it will tell you A1 as the first one instead of A0. That's all. It's the same. God bless you. Okay, graphing 
zooming stat plot or zoom stat. Okay, so I have this is what I'm what I'm actually looking at, right? What do we think the closest could be? Quadratic, Quadratic or maybe exponential, probably not linear, okay? So to figure out between those two, I literally have to go to the models of each. So I'm gonna do quadratic stat, oops, I hit the wrong button, stat, quadratic, five, just do it quick so you get your R squared. The quadratic R squared is 0.9942. I'm gonna do that again, stat, and I'm gonna go to exponential. And the exponential, r squared, is 0.996, oh no, I wrote down the wrong one, 993. So which one's better? Quadratic. quadratic. So now I wanna get my model, stat, quadratic. And I wanna store it, because it asked me a question about it later. So the best fit data y equals a is point four or 4.673x squared plus, oh, that's a negative, minus 5.334x plus 2008.772. Two that's your whole model. And it could be f of x or it could be y. Then it said compare the predicted cost. So my predicted cost is what I'm going to get by plugging in. The actual cost was $5,814. So second quit, alpha, oops, alpha, trace, bring up the Y1, open your parentheses. 2010 was year 30. And it estimated it to be $6,054.31. So what, what's the comparison there? What, the model overestimated or underestimated? The model is what I get by plugging it in. The actual is here, right? So the model Over. overestimated. The line would have been, or the curve would have been over my actual point. If you want to see it, you can graph it. This was what? This was 80, 90, 2000, 2010. That line is close, but it is above the actual. So the model overestimated. At 2010. Specifically, if I wanted to find R, I would do 6,054.31 minus 5,814. And that's going to give you your R value. Valeska. Um, I did Y because um, 2010 was our 30. So I did Y, not F1, Y1 and 30. But make sure you put those parentheses. What is? This is one. Yeah. No, you can tell by the numbers. I said if you wanted to. What's well, point? On the chart. That one. Okay, thank you. What? Is the number on the chart. The, model. the number in the chart is the actual. The actual. So the, the f of whatever, or y of whatever, is the predicted. So if you use your calculator to find it, you're finding the predicted point. If you're using the chart, that's what actually happened. If the predicted is less, then the model underestimated it. Yep. Yeah. You could also use the input value to find it. Yes. Yeah. If the predicted is like under, but like this point for 2020 was overestimated, do we say? It's specific to that one. Yep. So the general trend here, look, this one was above it. 
This one looks like it was a little below. This one is almost on it. This one's below it. And this one's really close. I would be say, I would say that's a really good model. That would be hard to say if it overestimated or underestimated for the whole thing. And that's, I mean, if you think about it, 0.9942 is a 99.42% accuracy on this. Okay, last one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, last one. So this one is literally asking, and this is kind of what a couple of the, I think there's one big question like this on the homework. It says, find the linear one, find the quadratic one, find the exponential one, then determine which one is the best one, and then find the predicted value of 2010 and compare it to the actual price. What does it mean in this context? You do. And then I'll go over it. So what I did was actually, I did linear. I stored it as Y1. Then I did quadratic, I sorted as y2. Then I did cubic, I mean exponential, and I sorted as y3. You can store as many as you want in there, okay? And then if you look, hang on two seconds. If you look, all three models are on the same graph. So you can keep as many as you want there. But then you don't have to figure out which one's the best, and then go back and do it again to get your next part, okay? So that's an option. From here and your r squared, the best one was quadratic. And then I did the model at 2010, which was my quadratic was Y2. So I did Y2 of 40. And I got 16.407. It's it's, and this is in enrollment in millions, right? So I keep all three. How does that compare to what actually happened? What actually happened was over what I predicted, which means the model was an underestimate. If I wanted to delete out the other Y's so I could just see the quadratic, and I know which one is 2010, like if you're specific enough, 2010 was this guy. That model was under the actual, okay? Make sense? Good? Questions? Maddie? Um, so all you have to put is that it underestimated. Yes. Okay. Yep. And if it wanted specifics, like there's one question I think on the AP that it gives you, like gives it to you in terms of the actual thing. I would say that in the year 2010, the model underestimated the amount of enrollment, like that kind of thing. Yeah. And it might, one of the questions says like, what is your R value? How much was it overestimated or underestimated? So you want to find the difference. Yep. It'll say if any, the positive negative is important, right? Yeah.